a real house, a real guy, a long list of real projects. This is Real Home Improvement, and I'm your host, Bill Link. Welcome to my dining room. It's not much of a room, really. It's more of a space, or maybe a nook. So welcome to my dining nook. Normally, having a small dining room would be a big problem, but not so much today, because I'm getting ready to start refinishing the hardwood floors. So having only about 42 square feet of floor space is actually a good thing. And what I'm going to show you here is that before I can begin refinishing, I actually have quite a bit of repair work to do. For instance, there's a real abrupt traffic pattern right through the middle of the floor. It goes from the living room into the kitchen. I've also got some exposed nail heads here. I've got a stain over there in that corner where it looks like maybe a plant leaked and stained the wood a little bit. I've got some holes in the floor behind me where evidently somebody ran cable television up into the dining room at some point. The quarter round is missing, the threshold is missing, and there's a few squeaks in the floors. So we're going to take care of each one of those problems before we actually refinish the floor. Let's take a closer look at each one of those problems before we actually get started, and I'll give you a little preview of how I intend to fix each one. Here's the traffic pattern I mentioned a little bit earlier, and this is actually two problems in one. The first problem is all the finish has been worn off in this area. The second problem is the floor underneath has been stained a little bit. Now, hopefully we can solve both problems with just some good old-fashioned sanding. But we may need to use something of a chemical cleaning agent to get all the staining out. But we won't know that for sure until we get the floor completely sanded down. A couple more problems that I talked about were the missing quarter round and these holes in the floor here. The missing quarter round, all I can figure is that at some point somebody removed the quarter round because this whole area was carpeted. But now that we're back to hardwood floor, that's got to go back in. As for the holes, like I said, at some point somebody ran cable TV into this area. You can see there's still some cable sticking up through here. So we'll get rid of that cable, and to fill those holes, we'll actually make our own plugs out of oak, put them in there, sand them down so that it just matches the rest of the floor. So here's a bunch of those exposed nail heads that I talked about, all lined up. I assume those are there to keep the floor from squeaking or to try and fix the squeaky floor. Two problems. One, they didn't fix the squeaky floor. Two, they look terrible, so we got to get rid of them. Getting rid of them is just a simple matter of pounding them down, but then we'll have to fill them back in. And we're actually going to use some of the dust we create from sanding to create our own wood filler and put in there so that we know it's going to match the floor. And by the way, this is where that missing threshold is going to go. So we got all these nail heads here. Presumably all these nails were driven to keep the floorboards from squeaking and they're not doing a very good job of it. Regardless, we got to get rid of them. And if we try and pull them out, we're just going to cause so much more damage to the floor by trying to pry them up out of there. The only choice really is to pound them down far enough that we can put some filler on top of them and hide them that way. Got so many different nails and different nail sizes all throughout the floor, so I've got three different sizes of nail sets to match it to the various head sizes. Of course, not all of the nails went in straight to begin with, so I had to be careful to tap them in at the same angle. Now, this isn't a real delicate procedure, but you don't want to cause any more damage to the hardwood floor, so tap just hard enough to set the nail about a quarter of an inch. That'll give you plenty of space for filler. Okay, I pounded down all the nails that I could easily find. I'll probably find a few more when I start sanding the floor, which is what I'm ready to do now. As you can see, I went out and rented a big floor sander. Which, by the way, if any time you need a specialized tool, that's a real good way to get it without having to go out and buy one. Hardware stores, home centers, there's even specialized rental centers where you can go out and get tools like this. Of course, you need to know a little bit about what you're looking for when you go in there, and, and floor sanders are a great example of that. There's actually a variety of different types that you can choose from. The one that I've got actually has three rotating pads on the bottom of it. I'm going to tip this up and show you what that looks like. The reason I like this type of sander so much is because it has these three random orbiting heads on it. Seven inch discs go on here. You can see the sandpaper just peels on and off of them. And because it orbits on the inside of this big canister, but then also spins in this random pattern, you don't really have to worry about the grain pattern on the floor. Another advantage to a sander like this is that it isn't likely to gouge the floor so you don't have to be in a big hurry to move the machine. You can spend a little extra time on problem areas. In fact, for the worst areas, if you lift up on the handle, take the weight off those wheels, and put it on the discs, you'll get the best results. And be sure to change pads as often as you need to. 
I only got about halfway through this floor before I had to change out sanding discs. All right, I've been over the entire floor with the 36 grit, the roughest grit that I've got. So all the finish is gone. Now I just need to keep sanding it so it gets a little bit smoother and we can apply the new finish. I'm switching over to the medium grit now, which is 50 grit. I'm gonna go over the whole floor one more time. Now that I've sanded away all the old finish, it's gonna be a lot harder for me to see where I've sanded and where I haven't. So I'm making a series of pencil marks on the floor and I'll just use the floor sander as a big eraser. The pencil marks will disappear as I go over an area and I'll know that I've been there. Of course, I'll have to do this one more time when I switch to the final grit as well. I've done as much as I can with the big sander, but that leaves all the edges in the corners where the big one can't get into. So I'm going to have to get at those with a couple of smaller tools, specifically a random orbit sander and a quarter sheet palm sander. This is the more aggressive of the two, so I'll use it wherever I can, but it'll have trouble getting into the square corners too, so that's where I'll have to go to the palm sander. Now I'm going to start with 80 grit, which is where I finished with the last one. And actually, I'm going to start and finish here with 80 grit. Uh, might as well go right to that when it's plenty coarse for these small areas. So now I just got to hit all these details and we're almost ready to start putting finish on it. A random orbit sander will get most of what the floor sander didn't. But for getting right up against the edges and into the corners, you'll want a quarter sheet palm sander. Now the trick to using a quarter sheet palm sander is applying just the right amount of pressure. Too much pressure and you'll stall the pad. Too little pressure and the sandpaper won't get a good bite. This particular model from Skill has a pressure gauge on the side of it. When you see the red light come on, let up a little bit. Just keep it in the green and you're good to go. Now it's time to fill all those nail holes. And I mixed up my own wood filler for that. I made it out of the sawdust that I've created from sanding the floor and a bit of white glue. I mix it to about the consistency of toothpaste. Now the reason I did this instead of just buying stuff from the store is I wanted the surest color match that I can get. Once I had it mixed up, I simply filled the holes nice and fat, then went back and scraped off the excess as best I could. That's going to save me some sanding a little bit later on. In just a couple hours after the glue hardens, I'll be able to sand this and it'll be ready to accept a finish. All right, I'm ready to fix these holes in the floor where the cable came up through. And in order to do that, I've got some wood plugs here, some oak plugs that I'll just place into those holes. But actually, the holes are a little bit smaller than the plugs I've got. So in order to fix them, I actually need to make the holes a little bit bigger. So I'm going to drill them out just a little bit larger. Then I'll glue the plugs in there and sand them flush with the floor. All right, I enlarged the hole a little bit. Now I'm ready to fill it with this wood plug. Need to get a little bit of glue on the edge of the plug. Doesn't take a whole lot. A little bit on there and spread it around with your finger so it's fairly even. It'll clean up pretty easily. Then when you position the plug in the hole, Line up the grain and the plug so it matches the grain in the floor as close as possible. Set it in there, twist it a little bit if you need to. Push it down as far as you can and just tap it into place. All right, we'll let that glue set up then we'll come back and sand that flush. I've sanded, I've filled, I've plugged, and I've vacuumed up my mess. So now I'm ready to apply the finish. And that's all I'm going to apply is a finish, no stain. Uh, I kind of like the natural color of this oak now that I got it all sanded down. It looks real good. So this oil-based finish that I'm using is just going to enhance that color a little bit, give it a nice warm glow. But because it is an oil-based finish and fairly heady stuff, I got all the windows open for good ventilation, and I'll be wearing this mask while I work to protect myself from the fumes. Again, since it's oil-based, I want to make sure that I got some mineral spirits and some rags on hand. So if there's any cleanup that I need to do, I'm ready to go. As for the rest of this stuff, uh, you'll see all of that in use and I'll explain it as I go. Rather than go through it piece by piece, it'll make a lot more sense as I'm actually using it. So now I'm ready to get started finishing the floor. I started by cutting in along the carpet. And to keep from getting finish all over the carpet, I used this drywall trowel as a shield. Then I just painted about a three inch wide band out into the room. Up against the wall, I didn't have to be quite that precise. 
because even if I got a little bit of finish on the base, the quarter round would cover it up. But I still wanted about a three inch wide band so that I didn't have to get the floor applicator right up next to the wall. Now, notice that I'm wearing rubber gloves and I'm also using a good quality synthetic bristle brush. Those are both standard equipment anytime you're working with an oil-based product like this. Once I finished with the trim work, I switched over to a wool applicator pad and started working on the rest of the floor. Now, these wool applicator pads have kind of a funny quality to them in that they tend to have a lot of loose fibers in them, and if you just start working with them, those fibers are going to wind up in your finish. So run a lint roller or even just a piece of tape over the applicator pad before you start using it. Get as many of those loose fibers out of there as you can. As you're applying the finish, work with the grain as much as you can, and while it goes without saying, leave yourself a way out. Notice that I'm using a watering can to actually pour the finish onto the floor. That makes it real simple for me to get some laid out and then I can just even it out with my applicator pad. It's been about 24 hours since I put the first coat of finish on it. I've added one more since then and I've installed the quarter round and the threshold. So this room's pretty much done. Now, the downside to a project like this is that it looks so good, my wife actually wants me to rip out the rest of the carpet and refinish the hardwood floors throughout the house. So you're going to want to consider that when you decide whether or not it's time to refinish your floors. But for me, all that's left is to move the furniture back in and enjoy what's left of the weekend. Hey, thanks for being here and be sure to stop back for my next project.